Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowen of Bowen Small Engine and today I wanted to show you guys how you should properly pressure test a chainsaw. Uh, this one happens to be an 028 Wood Boss made by steel. Um, I want to start off by showing you guys that there are special adapters for these chainsaws. This here is pretty well universal. Um, I also have a, a little plug here on the impulse line. Um, you can get these typically from any Dremel tool. And of course here's another adapter that's just been plugged off as you can see these adapters here are pretty well universal they're used on many many different models this adapter here is just basically meant to take the place of the spark plug if you want to allow air to be put into the cylinder from the top or bottom on some chainsaws some of the older ones, like top handles, they can be a little difficult to uh, to get to, so they made that adapter to where you can just basically unscrew the spark plug, stick it in that, and that takes care of that for you. This plug here is used on your compression releases. Your compression releases typically go on this side of your cylinder, although there are a few newer ones that have them on top. Your compression releases releases although you aren't seeing them on this particular saw will typically go on the sides and this plug basically just takes the place of your compression releases guys I know that these can be a little difficult to find uh, they can also be a little expensive over the years I've spent a great deal on each of these what I would recommend if you can't find your adapters is buying you a piece of neoprene. It comes in a 12 by 12 sheet. I think this one's an eighth inch thick. I gave about nine bucks for it. If you do not want to make your own, you can buy your own. This is called a plate, which is made by Dalmar. It's basically just a piece of neoprene that's been cut, as you can see. And what you do with these, instead of the adapters, you will use your original muffler with its bolts and nuts will slide it into it and bolt the muffler down. You'll basically do the exact same thing for your carburetor. You would apply it, as you can see, you'd apply this where your carburetor would be and tighten the carburetor bolts down. At this point guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you the proper pressure tester that I would recommend you use. I do have many, as you can see in my EMAC kit, there are many different styles of pressure testers that you can have. This is just one that came in the EMAC kit, but I actually prefer this one. There's a reason. PowerBuilt made this particular pressure tester with a vacuum tester as well. It's a very, very handy little tool. What we're going to start off doing first we're going to stick our hose on to our adapter. We're going to put it on pressure, just straight back. And we're going to start pumping up to about five pounds. And as you can see, that's holding pretty good. Now, guys, there's a reason that I mentioned that you need to take a vacuum test. Although this looks like this saw is going to be just fine. I want to show you guys something. We already know that there's a vacuum leak on this. And we're going to show you. If you watch, you're going to see bubbles. See those bubbles? See the bubbles coming out of there, guys? This is why it's important to check your seals and check all your gaskets. And as you can see, it's gradually starting to go down. We're going to let the air out of it at this point, and then we're going to do a vacuum test. You want to pump it up to five pounds on the vacuum. 
and as you'll see it's gradually going down on the vacuum side not quite like the pressure side that's why it's important to do both a vacuum and a pressure test at this point I think we pretty well covered why you should do a vacuum and pressure test I'm going to go ahead and end the video at this point. I'll see you YouTubers later.